In today's world, marriage is something the two adults who love and respect each other take part in. This was not always the case, though. Up until quite recently, marriage was more like an exchange of goods where at least one person may or not be an actual child. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. What is child marriage? It's sad to think about, but child marriages were the norm in most of the world up until the early 20th century, and still are normal in some places. Child marriage is defined by at least one participant being under 18. This could be either the male, the female, or both, though in most cases it's the girl that's underage. One of the reasons that people got married so young is that the life expectancy was so much shorter than it is today. When the average person dies in their 40s, teen marriage is a lot easier to understand, though it does still sound pretty bad to us today. Most often, though, people were married to make partnerships either between nations or businesses. Greeks It's important to know that the idea of ancient Greece is a newer concept. There was no unified Greece until much later in time. Instead, there were several nation-states, each with their own laws, customs, and traditions. However, there were some concepts that they shared across what we call Greece today. One of those things was marriage. In ancient Greece, most girls were married by the time they were 16, though often they were married much younger, even at 14. Men, on the other hand, were usually married at 30. This means that a man could be double his wife's age. There was somewhat of a good reason for men to marry so much later than girls, and that is that many Greek states required all men to serve a certain amount of time in their military. This was much easier to do if he was single. While Greece might have only allowed monogamy, it wasn't unusual for wealthier men to have both a wife and a concubine or a lover. There were a couple of different reasons that a couple got married. The most popular was a marriage arranged by two families. This would be used to cement alliances and to expand business dealings. The husband got a little say in the matter, but the girl would have gotten none. In these types of marriages, the husband would usually exchange gifts with his soon-to-be father-in-law. Fathers of the bride would also provide dowries for their daughters. This showed that the girl's family was not selling her or rejecting her for some reason. They made the arrangements more official and legitimized it. When a father was looking for a husband for his daughter, he would have been more concerned with wondering if the man was going to make a good son-in-law or business partner than he was if the man would make a good husband. Arranged marriages might have been the more popular option for Greek society, but they weren't the only marriages that were made. There was an occasional love match, but these were rare and love was usually saved for affairs. In general, marriage was arranged by the families of both participants. While marriages were expected to last a lifetime, divorce was an option. Men had the right to divorce their wives if they were unable to have children or if she cheated on him. Regardless of why a man would divorce his wife, he would have to return the dowry to her father. In Athens, it was possible for a woman to ask for a divorce, though they were much harder to get and were granted far less often. A father could also ask for a divorce on her behalf if the two didn't have any children. Although love was not expected to be a part of Greek marriages, it was still expected that the two had children soon after they got married. This implies a lot of cases of not so consensual sex. Rome Rome famously took a lot of their culture from their Greek predecessors, and the laws and traditions around marriage were no different. Like Greece, marriages in Rome were supposed to be strictly monogamous. However, this didn't stop many men from having many affairs. Like in Greece, many marriages were arranged and love was not a requirement for a marriage. Though if a couple stayed together for long enough, it's likely that they grew to have at least mutual respect for one another, if not some type of love. Like we already said, many of Rome's marriage laws were adopted from Greece's and so were pretty similar. One way that they differ, though, was divorce. It was incredibly easy for Romans to divorce. A man could leave his wife for virtually any reason. Even women were able to take their dowries back, return to their families' houses, and that was considered an official divorce. The patriarch of a house could also command that any couple under his household get divorced. A couple could not divorce just because they didn't like each other, though. They had to have legitimate reason for the action. 
or at least pretend that they did. Another difference between Greece and Rome was that Rome had age requirements on marriages. Girls could be married as young as 12 years old and boys at 15. However, men usually waited until their mid to late 20s to marry. This is because the Romans thought that girls matured significantly faster than boys and that a man wasn't done maturing until he was at least 25. Again, this could leave a girl marrying someone that was more than double her age. Egypt Ancient Greece and Rome were just about the only two Mediterranean cultures that practiced monogamy. Egypt, like most of the other societies in that area, practiced polygamy. That is to say that it was acceptable and normal for men to have multiple wives. Just because a man could have multiple wives doesn't mean he did. More wives meant more financial burden on him, so polygamy was more popular among the upper classes who could afford it. Another big difference between Egypt and other Mediterranean cultures we've talked about is that men usually got to choose their own bride. They were not assigned a wife by their family. The girl, of course, still got little to no say in the matter. Because a man got to make his own decisions, love matches were much more common, at least from his side. Although the upper classes did still have some arranged marriages, their main wife would be assigned to them, but they were free to take on other wives and concubines that they chose. Similarly to Rome, men were usually around 20 years old and girls were 12 or 13 when they got married. This might sound bad to our ears, but is a little easier to hear when you remember that men often died before they turned 40 and women died even younger through childbirth complications. Unlike other ancient cultures, marriage in Egypt wasn't so official. Getting married simply involved telling their friends and family about their commitment to each other and moving in with one another. A contract was drawn up, but it was nothing as strict as other places. Although couples got married with the intention of staying together through life and into the afterlife, divorce was also an easy process. Some couples even had prenups written before they got married to make divorces even smoother. If you didn't have one, then the woman would usually get one-third of the couple's property and money. Like everywhere else, the main goal of marriage was to have children, even for brides who were in their early teenage years. It was normal to have six kids, but having more than ten was not uncommon. Having so many kids is a big reason that women died so young, because there were more chances for complications to happen. China Many cultures in the ancient world preferred male children to female children. This is partially because families knew they would have to one day provide female children with a dowry, but also because girls were seen as more of a burden on the family. This was no different in ancient China, and it was not uncommon for girl babies to be killed or abandoned shortly after birth. The decision to do this would have been up to the patriarch of the family and not necessarily the girl's father. Just like in other parts of the ancient world, China had girls married off at around 14. Here, though, young girls had another path available to them. In addition to being married off, they could also be sold into rich households or brothels as concubines. It's hard to say if this was a better or worse life than an arranged marriage. Concubines were expected to be entertaining and intelligent, which means they would have received more of an education than the girls that became wives. They would also have been taught the arts by some of the best at each skill. They were, however, slaves and expected to please their masters at any time and with no objections. Regardless of if a girl was married to an older man or sold into the sex trade, she would have no say in the matter. After the Ancient World Children marrying adults and each other persisted through the Middle Ages, though it was less common for the lower classes than it was for nobility. The rulers had to ensure that their lineage continued, so girls would be married off as soon as they were able to have children. They also continued to use these marriages as political tools and ways to make alliances. Princesses were promised to dukes or foreign princes, and daughters of business owners were married off to sons and others in the industry. Even today, child marriages remain a thing in many parts of the world. Even when there are laws to prevent them, there are loopholes that people can use to get around them. Although now they are less about business arrangements and have more to do with financial exchanges, there are several organizations working hard to put an end to these. Can you imagine getting married at such a young age, especially if it was to someone that was literally double your age? If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.